Now it's, yeah. Live streamed. Okay. It's being live streamed. Hi, everyone. Good morning. We're Art Matters New York. I'm Mark Saffin. I'm here with my colleague, Hans Vici. Hi, everyone. And Marie, Barbara, Phyllis, um, our artists. Um, it's summer. Uh, light, lots of rain, lots of air. We're all good. Uh, we have some work that we're going to look at today. Our one of our regulars, Marsha, who is not here today, sent a bunch of uh, photographs. I think from MoMA, with a lot of uh, a lot of images from some artist named Van Gogh. So. At the end of the show, we can either look at those or not. I think How do you spell pretty, it? Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're all pretty familiar <laughs> with <laughs> that great work. You know, I mean, we needless to say. Um, but in the meantime, we'll look at our own work. So why don't we just go right there? Uh, here we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this is by Phyllis Gutman. Phyllis, what I do you think, want to say? Anything? Uh, I think you should show them all because this is an offshoot. You want me to show, say that? Them. Yeah, this was the first one. This uh -huh. is a painting. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, the others are um, this. They start with I made computer prints out of them and used a filter, and then I drew into the other two. Mm -hmm. But this is a painting. So this and is a painting on canvas or canvas board or paper. What? Oh, it's on paper. I don't use anything but paper. Um, is it? What kind I, of, is it, is it acrylic or gouache or it, what? It's gouache and watercolor. Mm -hmm. On photo paper. No, on watercolor paper. Oh. I love the yellow. I mean, that's what I see. That's the first thing. It's just a visceral, you just receive it. You just have to receive it. You know, it's just yellow that hits you. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful because it's so unabashed. Mm -hmm. It's so rich and full of what it is. I, I love the blue. Me too. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's so much yellow that the blue has suddenly yeah. another. And I was going to go there. I was get I was getting there, but I wanted to establish yellow first. <laughs> That's I was very very astonished. <laughs> yeah, the blue is perfect. It's just like <laughs> the perfect clear shade. It's so full of light. And interesting the way yellow and blue are both full of light, but different kinds of light. Because yellow is the lightest color in fact goethe when you know he established his theories about color he categorized or classified color relative to the amount of light it had he didn't uh classify it you know in our contemporary color wheel you know red orange yellow green etc he, he had a totally he different system. very he was very scientific in a way yeah by wavelength absorption of uh, materials, and then, and then he even had this theory that the, the, once you go out of uh, the atmosphere, it, it, there must be a, a very purple uh, thing going on, and he could never prove that. But, but uh, he was right. But, but, Ultraviolet uh, astronauts, you know, were actually confirming it. it uh, well, even uh, even uh, ultraviolet, you know, there are there are wavelengths that we can't see on the other end of the spectrum, on either end of the spectrum, infrared, ultraviolet. Yeah, yeah. And then all those same, all those frequencies, you know, go into all kinds of other 
waves, etc. But anyway, we're talking about the visual, the spectrum, that the wavelengths that we could see. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. we're playing with those. Is that I like the the portrait is embedded in there, surrounded by it, by all this color. Yeah. Yeah, I like that too. Where do you see the portrait number one? You don't see a portrait? No. Eyes. Ah. No. In the center, off wow. to, on a side angle. Center oh. angled. Oh, I see that now. And then I see a body on the left side in orange or. Yeah. A head and then a body with arms. Phyllis, was that purposeful? Oh, the head was, but I don't see any bodies right now. Yeah. It? I see somebody like standing with the arms like on the left side. Oh, that could be an arm, yeah. Oh, but yeah, I see what you see. This is the head. Right. And this is the torso with an arm. Yeah, that down. would be like the left arm and then two legs. And it has like a towel or a, some sort of something wrapped around the hips and legs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you see the portrait? Yeah. yeah. You pointed it out. But yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't even see that. But what I really like about this is it's, so um, to me, it looks like I'm um, at the bottom looking all the way up and I see like this sliver of a sky and I'm surrounded by, you know, these beautiful shapes in yellow and green. You know, I look like I'm looking up. It's be I think it's beautiful. It's very, um, I like it also because there's something, uh, let's say spontaneous or intuitive. It just feels like this whole thing, all these layers of portraits of figures, you know, the diagonals, the little diamond sky, uh, all these things intuitive. just sort of effortlessly, effortlessly come together. But yeah. that was not intuitive. Uh, the uh, structure is very deliberate. I used the structure I had been using on other paintings. I know, but yeah, I but I don't mean to say that it's not deliberate or that it isn't thought about. I just mean to say that the way it all is expressed feels like, you know, even though I know that things take time and consideration, but still the way it comes together feels like <laughs> one, of one piece. The painting is, I think, the most spontaneous in this. This painting. Yes. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. So I you see what you're saying about structure though, because for me, it kind of has a lot of structure. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, for sure. Yeah. Oh, so I now here's the, fe here's the portrait. Oh, uh, this is better sequencing to see it. Phyllis, you're right. Mm. Nice, this, great this drawing. In the... Uh, I put it uh, into the computer and used a filter, and then I painted into it. Hmm. So you took that original painting and you just completely filtered it and turned it into this? I didn't completely, I chose a filter. Oh. And those are the, uh, the you know, the, the lines are the filter which is really the skeleton of the first painting. But it looks like the face is so much bigger on this, is it? Well, that's because of the color also, I think. I, I might have used different size paper, I don't know. Yeah, something. Yeah. And there's but another like one too. Isn't I like the sort of the Cupid doll eyes. Like these big oversized eyes. <laughs> Have With you me. ever seen the movie Big Eyes? Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um. Yeah. As a, I, I sort of I like that sort of, but uh, yeah, the big eye makes it a bit like a caricature. Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. You know. I mean, but. Uh, 
a light, it's a light and uh, it's interestingly done sort of, yeah, it's, yeah. There's another one too, Mark, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, um, that's also interesting. Were these done after your accident? You know, I thought about that. <laughs> I can't even remember. So I had to go back to my, uh, you know, the dates on my uh, camera. Mm -hmm. But what I did, uh, the, the original painting was done before the accident. And then mm -hmm. I did the other two after the accident. I really like the color, this really uh, mm. soft, sweet yellow and the green and the, you know, the shade of crimson, whatever it is, alizarin crimson or, mm. you know, whatever you want to call that color, yeah. you know, reddish violet, all those colors. And then, of course, the blue window. Really nice. Yeah, it's intriguing because it's so lightly done and not overwork, but that it's yeah. a, like, quite strong, you know, it's not. Yeah. yeah. That light coming in the window is so beautiful. Right. And it looks like there's like a, a like weather, <laughs> like weather, like a little bit of this ocean with rain or something. Mm -hmm. There's like weather out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gee, that's great. I keep I'm seeing angst in all of them. I do too. You too? Yeah. Yeah. I'm no art therapist. But yeah, if the mouth were a little bit more of an oval, you know, then we'd be recalling Munch, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very interesting. Beautiful. Yeah. I like this piece a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It, it develops even the longer you look at it. Yeah. It, yeah. it starts to... Uh, Mm -hmm. to do more and more. Mm. This one is a little spooky for me, like the way that you did the eye. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's interesting. I agree. Well, I have to tell you that when I looked like after the accident was like a Lucian Freud painting. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, the transfer, I healed so <laughs> remarkably well. You know, that's a sign of good health, Phyllis. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. what I looked like was just uh, my hair looked good. They'd come into the hospital and they'd say, but your hair looks so good. That's so important. <laughs> that was so, oh. <laughs> I started to laugh. Because mm. I, I kept photographing myself. Really? I, saw, wow. I photographed this monster that I saw. It was wow. uh, it was so interesting. Wow! Uh, to see the transformation that could happen to you, you know, yeah. to your body. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I can see almost three or four faces in there, different. You know. Yes. And so it has to, for me something like a movie. It's almost a movie. You know, like a moving images. You know, one one thing. It's, oh, yeah, it's interesting. Really nice piece. Mm. Beautiful. I think that's uh, yeah, really the probably the yeah. I mean, this is also nice. But I like this too. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is definitely but the most so powerful. Yeah. I, I agree. I think this. I I love the other ones, but I think this one's the most powerful. Mm -hmm. Can we see the first one again too? No, that was the third one. Oh, that was the third one. I like See, this too. I like all yeah. of them. To me, that one is the most. Um, this one? The first, the third one. Yeah. That one has the most, I don't know, biographical uh, reference to what happened to you, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. Oh, this is much better looking than I. I mm -hmm. th those pictures are just. They're fascinating. Are you going to do something with them? Do you think? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my, my brain isn't fun functioning too well, uh, as usual. But um, I don't know. 
I let it happen the way it happens, you know. Why don't you take one of the photos and filter it and then paint on it and just play That's, with it? I could do that, yeah. That would be a great idea. You could uh, see my great hair cut on there. I want to see the hair. That's all I'm interested in. That's, that was the joke <laughs> in the hospital. Go look at her hair. <laughs> I'm from California, remember? <laughs> hair is important, I know. Yeah. Uh, I know. That's funny. That's a great idea, though, to filter the uh, the photographs. Yeah, right? yeah. Very they have nice. Wonderful lines in them. Great. This one reminds me of the street. Who was that? That did the street. The street. The, the turn of the century. Um, oh God! People marching on the street with their furs. Oh, I know. What you mean. Is it Heckler? No. I know who you mean. I see the picture, the painting. Oh, you mean, you mean, you mean Kirchner. Kirchner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kirchner Street. Oh, Skinny Berlin. Street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. They're very nice. Yeah, yeah. I love this. It's just very expressive. It's expressionistic, really. Yeah. It's expressionistic. Yeah, it's really, yeah. Very good. This one, you know, the, the composition, the way, the, mm. you know, the way it, it uh, uh, the way the space is organized is very strong. These areas are just yeah. very large, very simple. And it's interesting, complex at the same time. I don't know. The subtlety of the color is beautiful. Right. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a great piece. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It is so cool. Next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Barbara. Barbara. Yes. Yeah. Is this the right yeah. oh, orientation? I, so. I don't mind if you change it, but yeah, this I, I thought this way. Yeah. I see a, I see a big face in this. Like um the kind of like semicircle is like the face in the um. way. Eye is on the upper left, or on the a little bit lower is a red eye, and then like a pointy nose. Mm. Yeah. Does anybody else see that? Or not? I, mean, I don't know what it is. A pointy I nose can, looking. I can way. see it, but I, I, I didn't uh, do it. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a blue meanie, yeah. sort of. Yeah. I see it. So. I see uh, geodes. This is a lot of paint also on top here, you know? Paint, no? Is it paper? It's, it's, um, it's on paper and it is... Um, oh, we can't see your face. What? We can't see your face. We can't see my face. I wonder what... Uh, how about now? A little bit below. We see your nose better. Yeah, we just see your nose. <gasps> you know, I just want to say... There is this phenomenon called pareidolia. Has anyone ever heard of that? No, what is that? It's the tendency to see faces mm -hmm. in otherwise unintended right. confluence of you okay. know, marks and so on and so forth. So it's a real psychological thing yeah. Yeah. that people have and people can develop a, you know, an overriding uh, <laughs> tendency to see faces, yeah. everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's- An electrical outlet, for instance. Exactly. Or, uh, you know, and- uh, you Yeah. Know. 
Yeah. yeah. It's e it's an easy pitfall, I think. There's the electric <laughs> outlet. <laughs> can can you see my face now? I yes, we see now your outlet. Uh, I mean the face. Yeah. <laughs> Is that really your face, or are we looking at an abstract painting? <laughs> Oh, it might as well be an abstract painting. <laughs> uh, so this is a transfer print um, from a photograph that I took of somebody else's painting, which oh. is a no-no. <laughs> Why not? Why? What do you mean it's a no-no? Well, I, it was a painting that I saw online. So, so I'm what? not, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter until the artist finds out if you happen to make money on it. <laughs> Otherwise, you can do whatever you want with. Uh, oh, okay, good. My conscience is clear then. Oh, come on. Of course. <laughs> I just felt really funny not using one of my own things. But anyway, I liked the painting. But um, so I, I did a transfer print of it and then changed a bunch of the color in there. Mm -hmm. um to see the original is it worth it or not uh, i knew you were gonna I mean, say well i mean it. it might be interesting to see how you transformed it okay let me see if i can or if you it. just you know lifted okay. it off the internet as is mm -hmm. Well, it's different from the way it was. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Hmm. Oh, bloody hell. Barbara, what's all the texture on this? Oh, well, that's the, the process the of, of, no, of transferring it. Mm -hmm. So that's Peel the paint, the transfer. Peeling the paint, peeling the layers from the painted image off. You know, it's a, it's a, it was a blank piece of printing paper that I smushed lots of Liquitex on. Oh, okay. Put this wow. uh, photograph of this painting face down. Mm -hmm. Oh, left it for three minutes. Oh. And then you peel it off and you get the texture from the paint on the original. Plus I went in there and added some, uh, using some, uh, I tried doing, first I tried using some um, uh, oil, oil pastels, but I wanted to actually paint with it a little bit. So then I went and used some uh, watercolor crayons uh, Karen Dash watercolor crayons to get some of the to change this in the center here it was looking like a fish and I didn't want it to look like a fish this pink yeah so that's changed in the center there and just just changing some of the coloring coloration this beige area was very flat beige so I went in there and did some coloring in there yeah. um, and and peeling layers of paper off but not always taking all the paper off. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. Bob. Sure. Once you peel it, right? Could you have painted over it? Did you paint? Sure. It? Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This this pink fish in the center turned out to be white in some areas. And so I, I really I had to fix that mm -hmm. for sure. Um, Barbara, was this what you what the the original that you took was this the whole thing yeah. the whole picture so yeah, this, this is the composition and the, yeah. the and the major forms yes okay there's some beautiful forms here yeah yeah to me I get the you know this distinct I like this so much I get this feeling of of this being on the ocean floating yes. With this is you know a horizon, and this is like some a boat, you know, just sitting on the ocean, and I'm not sure what this yeah. is, but it has looks like it's floating on the surface. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, the original had this looking much, even more so like a boat and this almost like a fish and some water. And I, I just wanted it to be a little less literal, you know? I so think the original more literal? This less literal from the original. Right. Oh, I oh, oh. That, Barbara, I, I love the uh, pink, um, pink form in the foreground and the uh, form in the on the left i think they're they're more simplified and more articulate than the rest of the painting gets kind of a mushy for me yeah a little yeah. bit more of that um articulation yeah i think it would really work beautifully because that's that has yeah. lovely texture the pink yeah. in that dark area the red, yeah. I think maybe are doing the problem for me. The whites are what? The whites are distracting, right? Ah. Where? Which whites, Phyllis? Uh, the whites in the large form, you know. Wait, what do you mean? You mean this? This? What? Where? This? Yeah. Well, I, I mean uh, that what the, the clearer areas are more articulate. This kind of, I don't know what's going on there. I, I wish there was more of the, uh, of the, I wouldn't take away all the whites. You know what I, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see more of this just in here. That's what I'm saying. More uh, of this. Yes. In other words, right. if this gray. That's what I'm saying. Went all the way. Flat areas. Let's say to here, just like a little yeah. maybe corner of white. Yeah. If it was more um, yeah. graphic, you know, more of this overall of this gray, it might be, I don't know, this area right here is bothering me for some reason. The beige area. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it works. Yeah, I, I understand that it works okay, but it's somehow confusing. Yeah, something yeah. is not uh, ah. right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it didn't, you know, it seems it didn't come through the process. It was just afterwards or yes, maybe it was, but somehow it, it, yeah. it doesn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not what's happening on the other parts. Of this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. there, there's nothing there in the original image other than plain, flat, beige area. So wow. that's why it's painted in there. But uh, it, I didn't go far enough, I guess. It needed, it needed more. No, or, or maybe you should have just left it. As yeah. A, that's the thing, you know. Exactly. What because if you had just left? It's doctored, you know, it's doctored. Right. That's the point. It is. Right. Oh, it, it looks doctored? Yes. yes. Yeah, because, huh. you know, it, it, it's another process, you know. You 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 have two processes here in the. In the well, no, actually, I did that in several other places, though. Okay, but then you did very good, you know. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> but there, it looks like doctored, you know, like. Oh, okay. I mean, not good doctored, you know. There, <laughs> it's like oh. as Phyllis said, you know, the health oh. the health system in America is. <laughs> as Phyllis Phyllis said, what the. <laughs> what did Phyllis say about uh, the situation in doctors, America? About yeah, the, all three about doctors. the medical. Uh, oh, the medical. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the strongest part of this piece for me is I, I love the pink and the interest that you have on that. Yeah. Shape and what you did in the middle of that, I think is, I keep coming back to that. To me, that's really beautiful and interesting. And I love how that lays on that deeper red. I, I think that's beautiful. Mm. You know, and it has a lot of dimension. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's really nice. I have to agree with Phyllis though, like what I said originally was the face and maybe because I keep seeing the face that upper right part is not as interesting to me as this beautiful pink and how you how it looks like it's so dimensional 
Um, and then I love also that light blue at the upper part of that pink. I think that's very successful. Ah. You know, that whole yeah. area is just absolutely beautiful. No, Barbara, yeah. you imagine mm. that area, the, the beige area that we're talking about, just a mm. continuation of this blue and gray. Yeah. Right? Then it would appear that this whole figure is floating Yes. On this, on this sea, on this body. Yes, I agree. That's nice. And it, you know, and it would look sort of almost like a crucifix with like a flower in the middle, like floating on this water. Mm. And it would, it would just completely simplify what we're looking at. I see what you Make mean. It very clear. Mm -hmm. You're just looking at this form floating on a ground. Yeah, yeah. And be, and be very powerful. I think the problem was that I followed the original yeah. painting too much instead of... Yeah. Right. Mm. But it would be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That That's just... really beautiful elements in here, though. Duh. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and this red is gorgeous. Amazing. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. No, I read, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's it's very good. I would put push it further. Uh, I I found myself getting kind of tired of working in this size. I have to. How big is it? Oh, uh, this is uh, nine by twelve. I have to get bigger. Yeah. I feel like I want to be bigger. I don't know. I you know. Don't we like, all? Ah, ah, ah. Um, I love this. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Oh. It has so much interest and power and places to go into and mm. texture. You're the texture queen. I think it's, and I love the, the upper left, the, the, the scratches. Mm. And I, I also love the lower left, the way that uh, it looks like it's dot, kind of like a dot matrix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> it feels like it going into something that's going to be very surprising when you get there. Ah. Oh. Interesting. Wow. It's a nice little trip. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Surprising, scary, or just surprising? <laughs> well, surprising. It could even be surprisingly beautiful. Okay. Like when you're going through the mm. parks in Italy, you know, mm. it's not to scare. Mm. But every time you go through, you know, it's something one inch is different from the next inch, and there's intoxicating right. beauty waiting for you someplace. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I see Goethe on the left side with an umbrella, you see. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very surprising what's going on. <laughs> I like that. Glad it was I think it's yeah, a interesting. <laughs> I mean, no, it's very... It's a... What? I see walking into a forest. You know? Yeah. That's the same kind of thing, the same kind mm -hmm. of thing. But yeah. I, I, for some reason, I saw Italy because uh, there's something architectural about the bottom part, yeah, the triangle of the painting. And it feels like an entrance to a gorgeous park, uh, you know, into yeah. Temple mm -hmm. Gardens or something like that. Oh, thank you. Thank you all. And I see even a dog in the... I love those kind of places, so I tend to see them many Yeah. Mm. In the oh, right, the I right wish corner. For them. I wish for them. Wait, the, where's, where's the doggy? In the right. Yeah, it's like a, almost a cloud uh, in the oh. upper uh, right corner. Oh, yeah, I see that. Oh. The negative oh. space there, right? 
you see, you, suddenly you see many things, you know. It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, this started, I have to tell you, this started, I didn't use a, a blank piece of, of printing paper. I'm running out. So I used one. I chose one that had some drawn lines on it. I think I was just trying to draw some lines for something and I don't know what, and then I just left it. And there was also in this lower left, there was also some kind of an imprint from, um, I, th I think uh, a stamping that I had stamped something. So um, I had a, I had a, uh, a drawing, uh, a partial print that where the periphery was basically these big black shapes all around it. So I transferred those black shapes throughout this different size black shapes. So it's a transfer, but it's a transfer in pieces. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting tired of the straight transfer. So, I, you know, I wanted to try something new. I think I have ADD. <laughs> I have our ADD. <laughs> I like this, Barbara. I like it. I do, too. I like it. I like it, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel I feel pretty good about this the way the way it turned out. I, I it was an absorbing process and and with a sense of surprise, like I really wasn't sure uh, where all this was going to land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely see that dog. I think it's more a wolf. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm seeing figures in there. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. So am I. Ooh. <laughs> it could be a bear here and there. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Or these are people walking through a forest or coming in and out of doors. This is fun. <laughs> oh. I'm loath to do this to anybody else's work. <laughs> I'm not doing it to my own. No, I like it. It's uh, it begs for another one or two, three, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this technique of using partial pieces. It is also, um, you get very interesting stuff on work that you worked in, and, and, and carved into and pressed into and um, sort of manipulated yes. before you start. That's really a good, um, you get some good stuff out of that kind of thing, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I it, see the wolf now also, Barbara, the wolf. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, uh, right. I, this is, you see, I know you see the wolf. But what I see is, you know, when you have the, the, the nose of the wolf is actually the legs of my white dog, which has a smaller face up there. You know, it's like oh, I see it. Yeah, a yeah. poodle, a poodle type, or a poodle. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I see, see the little so face. You have a very like this uh, double uh, things. You know, like the old lady and the young lady drawing. Right. Right. Or, yeah. You know, we have different. Uh, oh yeah, types. yeah, yeah. So things are overlapping, and it's uh, you know, it's in your brain doing all this stuff. Yeah. 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 I like it. I mean, it's a very ev evocative, oh. evocational. I mean, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you. Think it, it was works better for me than the other one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I kind of the more, other one. You have more room. You know, it opens more in a way. Than Absolutely. One, you know. I yeah. kind of, I kind of hate to say this, but the upper left, I, I see a. A Jewish star. 
Oh, eyes. Yeah. You see that? Hi. Yeah. Like where the scratches are. Yeah, you can see that. Two. A little oh, further, you see it cross. Yeah. So it kind of looks like two inverted triangles, like the. Yeah, I see yeah. that. Yeah. Or a tape, but not you know, intentional. Like, uh, at yeah. end of uh, indigenous, uh, yeah. you can also see a tip here. Uh, uh, how is, is it the tip? Tent. Oh, a what? A the peak of a tent. Tip. They call tip. Tip. Like, of a tip. Like yes. Yeah. That, that, you know the construction of tent. Oh yeah, yeah. I see that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. I like these lines that they they that, that you put something on top of that thing. It yeah. makes it makes it yeah more it's interesting. Yes, thank you. I like working like that also, and I'm gonna try it again. I think yeah, and I also like the piecemeal uh, transfers mm -hmm. where you you get uh, more of a sense of accident, but you can also place them as you want to but sure. still not you know you can't really be sure what's going to happen until it happens right yeah it's a good range of whites a good range of grays mm. what a good grays uh -huh. yeah. oh, thank Great. you okay yeah Barbara I like that yeah Fun thank you very much everybody Oh, oh, my God. Wait a second. You can, you know who that is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, OK, God. Marie. Marie. Speak. <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kind of oh. playing a little bit. OK. So I have the painting. It's four feet by five foot on the right side. And then I put another canvas that's four foot by five foot on the left side. And since we're gonna be moving and renovating, I saw that we had this yellow moving tape or whatever you would call it, piece. Trap. Mm -hmm. That's kind of an, another interesting mark, way to mark the canvas. Yeah, um, yeah, maybe. But I didn't, what I did, which I, I maybe you can see on the upper middle part of the canvas is I overlap the canvas. Yeah. And I didn't get a chance to do this, but one of the things I want to do is pour paint over that kind of surface so that it it kind of connects the two canvases that way, which I've, I haven't done that before. Playing with integrating the canvas th this way, I haven't played with yet. Do it. Do that? Okay. Yes. Why not? Yeah. And is this like... You know, I mean, you could do a whole series of you know, paintings, you know, different levels of surface, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, you know, imposed, superimposed canvases. Yeah. You could do a whole series of pouring paint in different ways and manipulating it with two different surfaces. Yeah. And you could do a whole series just based on that. Like yeah. just refine it to those two things. I mean, okay. to that, you know, process. And another way of looking at it is that I would, another way of saying that is overlapping those canvases, right? That's what I'm talking about. Like overlapping two canvases of different, same or different sizes, whatever. So you have two different levels, yeah. surface, and then just find out what, how paint, how a liquid responds to those two different- Surfaces, that's what I thought was like- That would be great. Okay. I mean, and you know, that's a very simple, straightforward you know system of just exploration okay see what comes out of it it would be interesting yeah uh -huh. i mean that's you know i mean that's one way to do it you don't you know it doesn't have to be that uh -huh. clinical but yeah. uh 
or systematic. <laughs> but, you know, like artists like, uh, you know, Jasper Johns did multi-level canvases, you know, the flags, yeah. most, you know, well-known. And, and Ellsworth Kelly also did a whole series of works of black and white paintings on two different levels. Okay. And sometimes the canvases were shaped, like shaped curves, yeah. stuff like that. And they would overlap, you know, so there was dimensional. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely territory mm -hmm. between painting and sculpture. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so what are you envisioning for the, the lower canvas? That's adjacent. The the one that has the yellow. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I was thinking that what I would do is uh, move paint from the top canvas, have it cascade over, so uh -huh. it's more integrated to the uh -huh. lower canvas. And the reason <laughs> why I had taken that tape was because I, I said, well, how am I going to hold those two actually together? Oh. And I thought maybe an interesting way to do that would be to like wrap it with the tape. And then I just threw the tape and I said, oh, this looks kind of, it's weird, but I kind of found it interesting. I don't, I, it's not integrated yet, but there's something I like about it. I don't know. And I thought I would get you, you know, some. I like the original painting, uh, probably without the tape. <laughs> I kind of want to see it without the tape. I, I think that's very interesting uh, forms there. I don't know. I just find it you know, not interesting. Oh. You know, I can imagine taking, you know, a whole package of whatever size canvases pre-made that you want, right? Yeah. Like 20 by 30 or 24, you know, it doesn't matter. Strapping them together yeah. with this thing and then pouring paint on the top and letting it drip down. Yeah. And that's it. In other words, so there's a way of, of thinking if you want to be, you know, sort of approach it conceptually. Yeah. Like, yes. you know, here's what it is here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, you add, but it's, so the, the point is how do you assemble ideas? How do you put together all these different interests or ideas, yeah. you know, and make it coherent? Exactly. You know? Because if you don't do that, then you have to just approach it as a combine. You know, I'm just painting with all these things. And then mm -hmm. you, you approach it as a painting and you develop it as a painting. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I like Rauschenberg of... or someone like that. Okay. But uh, so there's different approaches. Yeah. But doesn't anyone else want to uh, see this as an individual painting on its own? The, it, to me, it looks very figurative. Well, uh, so, that, so then that's a painting. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You can approach it as a painting and deal with yeah. it as a painting. Yeah. And so, yeah, you, so you can look at the form. You know, yeah. as a you know, a simplified or Jungian thing, you know, that means something, you know, expressionistically or yeah. yeah. I mean, there's different ways of looking at sure. images. As, as a painting, it's not you know, just as a painting, it's not it doesn't hold my interest enough. I need to go back into it and mm -hmm. make it better. It's it's not actually it was part of a diptych and. Oh. Somebody wanted the lower part. Oh. <laughs> they didn't have enough room for the whole thing. But um, I guess the lower part was better. So in any so case... The lower part was connected to this upper part? It was... Um, By yeah. painting? So the painting the, this piece was the top. Yeah. And the other piece uh, was below it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think a, an, a painter that you should look at is Joan Mitchell. Oh, really? Yeah, because mm -hmm. she 
you know, she did diptychs and triptychs and stuff like that, but she was always, mm -hmm. you know, at her, you know, she was always an expressionist or an, ex, you know, impressionist slash expressionist that was always interested in painting, mm -hmm. you know? And so I get, I feel like that you have a lot of ideas, but really you like painting, you like making, yeah. you know, something pictorial, yeah. you know, ultimately, uh, some you know place to enter into the paint yeah. and uh i think joan mitchell i mean she was very different obviously but uh you know she had ideas too but it was but she stayed with her uh you know her you know forte i guess which was that mostly you know, like applying art? paint oh i thought it was mostly like um uh mm -hmm. like not gardens, but, you know, floral. It, it, she was in, she painted a lot in, in France. She yeah. was inspired by the landscape. Yeah. You know, and by nature, yeah. you know, definitely. But she was an abstract painter. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, That's great. I'm going to definitely. I don't just check her work out. And, yeah. I love her work. So that because I think that she meant, she focused. She, you know, what you need to do is focus. Yeah. Things yeah. together. And into one thing. But Mary, since you are so interested also in the optical illusion sometimes, <laughs> yeah, what I would do here is, for instance, take the yellow tape, which goes now out there on the corner, you see, yeah. there, bend it like uh, just uh, next to uh, that black uh, uh, round thing. Okay. And then, and then, you know, to, to echo the, the form, and then you get immediately, you read this black thing as the shadow of that yellow tape. Oh, that's you know, funny. Oh, wow. So, okay. you know, uh, I would, I would uh, start a little bit like this also to, to, to uh, you know, to, to that's, make... That's a great what, idea. What's happening. Maybe it's really working and maybe interesting, you know. Oh, I would that's play a little funny. Bit. Okay. I can definitely try that. And what you're saying is use use the yellow tape, and that's what I was trying to do as another form of paint. Mimicry, right? You know, like uh, like the paint. Yes. That, I got oh, you. I just mm. do it just next to that form. Yeah. There and see what's happening. Mm. Maybe it's yeah. Really that's good. funny. That's a good idea. That's so funny. it would be like a shadow of that line. Oh, and then you have really a, a, a connection, also, you know, in a way. Yeah. In a weird yeah. Way. This has no connection. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I like the form of the yellow tape on this other blank uh, canvas there. I do too. Oh, I think I it's... like that. That you can you can leave that right like this for me. Yeah. yeah. But it does it have any connection with the other side of the painting for you? <laughs> also, uh, I you know that it just goes. I mean, you know, you of course you can read it. You see, you have also like this black line going out. You, you know, you could say, oh, that's uh, you know, it's the parallel of the. Yeah, I see. But but way. I think it's it's not really working here. So no, no, I will go around this uh, round thing there. Okay. And, that's to keep the yellow tape not going outside, it should be like uh, some yeah, rough stroke you are painting. doing, you know, in the painting. I wouldn't put it out there. So L try it. The question is here, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, to myself, and here I'm thinking out loud, is how much time you want to spend in your art making process planning, planning, and then executing. You know, like I like to eliminate planning personally, right? Some people like to plan. They yeah. figure it all out and then they make the painting or yeah. they, you know, or they, but they do it in a way that make like Ed Ruscha, let's say. Ed Ruscha figures everything out and then he mm -hmm. paints it. Right. So he might do something with words, you know, and shadows, you know, or this or that or the other, Bye. whatever. But, okay. But and I like, like a graphic, to, a graphic designer has to. Yeah, so he's a, he, first. he has great ideas. That's and not he's a painterly a, process; it's a concept which you just and uh, it's more conceptual. Right. So he's he's a 
he has great ideas and he's a great graphic designer. And yes. so it all comes together and he's a great artist. Mm. Um, so, you know, I like personally, I like to just hit the canvas <laughs> and see where it goes, you know, yeah. and I'm engaged and it's moving and I'm developing a painting. I don't want to think, I don't want to plan, you know, cause I'm kind of lazy in a way, or I think that maybe my ideas aren't good enough in a strange way. And I'm having more fun just, you know, mm splashing around like you know what I mean <laughs> so that's what you have to you have to find out where 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 your sort of you know your your strengths are where your comfort zone is yeah. because like you know doing this thing with the tape getting it to stick to the canvas when you put it upright those those things you have to figure out you know the shadow is it going to be a poured paint or are you going to do it with a spray can you know or, or an airbrush and make it really look like a. Sh Those are all things you have to figure out if you're going to do it as a series, as you know, a multiple. So that's that's the key. It's like, what do you like to do? How do you want to spend your time? See, I think you're a. I think you're a painter. I think you like playing and spilling paint and moving it around. And, you know. So I mean, I'm not just. I'm not saying that that excludes you know, or precludes the possibility of doing something else. But I'm just saying you have to figure that out. Yeah, no, I think that that's a really good question. I just think for me, because the, the way that I paint, the faster I paint, the better it, my, mm. my abstract painting is. But I'm trying to kind of get outside of my comfort zone. Mm. And I think it was interesting to hear what you were saying, Mark, that you like to paint and you don't like to plan it. But your paintings are not conceptual. They're, no. They're about skies and stuff. But if you want to get yeah. into conceptual painting, you got to think about it because you want people to be thinking along with you. You know, you're, you're, you're presenting not just paint, but a concept. A I color. agree. I yeah, agree. That's if what that's what you want to do and you enjoy, if you can do it, yeah. you know, then by all means, do it. But that takes a certain kind of, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, it's a different approach. Different approach. Yeah, different approach. And you know, there are many, many artists that do that, and they do it very well. And uh, you know, like my friend Alex Ross, who was here. Yeah. You know, he plans everything out. Yeah. He makes a model out of clay, mm -hmm. and then photographs it, and then paints. The, the photograph of the model. That's how he does it. And it mm -hmm. takes time and it takes planning. He does other stuff that's more spontaneous that are just drawings. But his paintings are very, very calculated. You know, it's just a way of doing it. And as I said, Luce would do that. And, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every, there's so many artists that work, you know, in so many different ways. Yeah, that's interesting. So you just have to find out what works for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We are very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone want to see this guy that you know painted a hundred years ago, Vincent Van Gogh? Sure. Are we interested? Sure. You can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> so these are photographs by Marsha, and I'm not sure, I think she took this one through the Whitney window, but uh, <laughs> with reflections and everything. So I'm, I'm not sure if Marsha intended this or if we're just gonna have to enjoy it as is. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. That was very like, like you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. He was. Unbelievable. Yeah. Huh. He's good. Maybe next. I mean, he doesn't have a yellow tape, moving tape, but other than that, he's pretty good. You know what? If he had it at the time, he would have used it. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> well. Painting, I like. Oh. You this know is what? like yours, Phyllis. Nice. Yellow with window. That's probably his studio, or I don't know. You know. 
Yeah, in Arl, the yeah. yellow house. I think we should do a class trip there. Uh, yes. That would be fun. South of France is always. Uh, uh, I, wow. just, I like this, like how he just painted a little part of this painting here. Yeah. yeah. You know, just to let it, this painting breathe here. Yeah. No, he, didn't, he didn't seal it mm -hmm. off. And then the bottles, you know, just look how perfectly, how drawn, beautifully yeah. drawn. Yeah. Well, but like his perspective, like what I read about him at a show was that he was a genius with perspective. Well, look at this. It's unbelievable, right? Look at that, so, how he just throws these volumes in. But even the perspective of this is is very different, right? It's not real. He's he he's well, he lived in little rooms, you know, <laughs> that I don't know. It's partly just, uh, formed his, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cypress tree. Yeah. Did a lot of those. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love this, all this detail back here. Mm. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. Way that's, they all, that's almost uh, Alex Ross. Absolutely. You know, I was thinking I was thinking the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this arm coming out of the ground with fingers, yeah. with a right. hand. Right. <laughs> it's the peace sign. Yeah, yeah exactly. Huh. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Huh. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Incredible, right? Yeah. Look at that sky. Yeah. Those are some clouds, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interpreted through, you know. Mm. Paint. That's amazing. The wheat is a beautiful color. The oh, hay. It is so pretty. It's like a golden. Gorgeous color. Mm -hmm. You know, he painted these very quickly. Did he? he painted, yeah. It's like, I don't think there was any underpainting per se. It was, he just covered the canvas with paint. Right. And and also mm -hmm. it, it's a very drawing like stroke. Yes. Like you know it was uh, yeah. That's actually very nice. It's very it's beautiful. Great. Mm -hmm. great. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like Monk's scream, you know, it's so iconic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was all about, you know, nature being alive and the monk the monk is exactly the same from that period mm. yeah. it's all about there's life you know and you know freaky spirits in everything you mm. know that resonate inside yeah animism 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 mm. And there's his perspective again, you know, in this little village, these little structures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Oh, I've never seen this. This is oh, really gorgeous. I guess mm -hmm. these are, are these at MoMA? I think so, at MoMA now. No, I think the Met. Oh, it's the Met? Okay. And Mo the Met, I think you're right. Yes. Yeah, the Met. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. Met. For all of our viewers, that's the Met, not MoMA. <laughs> okay. Just get that straight. <laughs> and this was his last work. This one's at MoMA. 
<laughs> but, yeah. Okay, so that's it. That was great. Yeah. That's it today. Okay, well, is our show finished? Um, well, yes. we could say that. Goodbye, right? Yeah. So, goodbye, everyone. It was so thank you very much for tuning in. And uh, it's always our pleasure to look at paintings and artwork and talk.